My favorite MacBook ever made is the MacBook Pro 13. It's what started me in the Apple products, it's what keeps me in the Apple products, and I've used them for most of my time. Using a MacBook, I've had a MacBook Pro 13. Well, now we've got the brand new Apple Silicon M1 version in the studio today. UPS dropped it off not 10 minutes ago. So, what comes in the box and is it any good? Let's find out. You didn't think I would slam it. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So the MacBook Pro 13 easily is one of my favorite series of computers of all time. I do think that with these new M1 chipset computers, the new MacBook Air might edge this out for me as a travel do-it-all computer if they have roughly the same kind of power. So I did not get the base model on this, I did get the slightly upgraded version of the MacBook Pro 13 with the 16 gigabytes of unified memory and a one terabyte solid state drive. You can see over here that this is the eight core CPU and the eight core GPU. Unlike the cheapest MacBook Air, they don't disable one of the GPU cores on any of the MacBook Pros. So let's crack this sucker open. I do like, this has a new picture on it. The MacBook Air was just the picture of the MacBook on its side. The MacBook Pro is clearly the favorite child of the MacBook lineup. It's clearly the child that Apple likes more because it gets the better picture. You ready? Here we go. Oh, I missed, Oof. too excited. Two says, is this too much of a package for me? I, I legit am not messing that up. I, I didn't mean for that to happen. I actually screwed that up twice. There we go. And it was anticlimactic. Gary, you've totally, it's embarrassing. I've never been embarrassed by an Apple packaging before. Video over. So yeah, the box is very similar to any other MacBook box. I do really like this background. That background is calling to me, but it's not the Big Sur background, which is my favorite background I think I've ever seen before. Come on. There we go, thar she be. And it is, much like the MacBook Air that we unboxed, this is freezing cold, because I assume it's been on a delivery van all day. So in the box, we get the USB-C cable designed by Apple, and the MacBook Pro does get a slightly beefier power brick. The MacBook Air had the 30 watt power brick, and this one I believe is 60? 61 watt. So the MacBook Air has 30 watt power adapter. This has a 61 watt. Gives you a little more power because you need it for the Pro. I don't know that that's the case though. I think it's kind of weird that Apple with basically the exact same chipset, um, I guess this does have a fan, so maybe it needs the extra power. Who knows, we'll find out. Okay, what else do we get in here? We get the MacBook Pro information because I have no idea how to do any of this stuff. And we've got the touch bar. Hooray, we're so excited about the touch bar. But I already know how to do that. That is not as important to me. MacBook Pro safety and warranty information and the stickers. I love, love, love the stickers. When the stickers aren't here, even though I never put them on anything, I'm sad. We always gotta have, always gotta have the stickers. And that is all of it in the box. Apple, I like me some minimalism. I like very nice aesthetics of your devices. Give me some cool stuff in the box though. Throw in like a, I don't know, just something cool. Even a razor, give me a microfiber cloth. Give me microfiber cloth. Here is the MacBook Pro 13 itself though. Whoo, that feels, that is a bit heftier than the MacBook Air. Mm, I love that. I love that, man, I love MacBook Pro 13s. I used the 2019 version that everybody hated with the dual core processor as its base model. I used one of those for like four months as my only computer while I was traveling. I've never wanted for power on the MacBook Pro 13s, even the budget model. So I'm very excited to dig into this. We do have this year, this is just like the base model from last year. We've got the two USB-C with Thunderbolt 3 on the side and then the headphone jack on the other side. This is not the chassis from the higher end model for last year that had the four Thunderbolt 3 ports with the beefier cooling system. I don't know if we're ever gonna see that chassis again because what's the point of a higher end MacBook with beefier thermal performance um, when you don't need it because of the chipset? And maybe we'll get some kind of cool like 14 inch laptop. We're hoping, here's hoping. So let's check it out. Feels pretty good. This one does have a fan so you can kind of see the exhaust back here. It is, so unlike the MacBook Air, this is uniform width on the end. So it's thinner than the MacBook Air, is thicker on the back, but it is thicker on the front than the MacBook Air. So it's uniform and man, I love it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I like it. I like it that as soon as you open it, you get the Apple turn on sound. So it's like Apple, that was Sega, but you know what I mean. Okay, so this still looks fantastic. We have 
The biggest physical difference you'll see right off the bat, we have a touch bar now instead of the physical keys. I would prefer the physical keys on all the computers. I'm not the world's biggest fan of the touch bar, but it's not a deal breaker, it's not a big deal. Everything else feels great. We do have the top firing speakers. It is that beautiful, just like aluminum block. MacBook Pro. Bezels are very, it's the exact same bezels and the exact same retina panel. Yes, oh, yes, thank you, Siri. Thank you, Siri. And as we're starting up Big Sur, I love this. I mentioned this in the Big Sur video. I should have mentioned this in the Mac Mini video, but I really like the thing that Apple gets right when you turn on the computer is new user experience. You saw, we opened it up. It already turned on and started walking me through setting it up. And now it starts off with accessibility, which is so important. Like new users, you got to bring them on, whatever their extra requirements or extra needs from their technology are. And I love that you now don't have to go search for a setting for this. It's right here up front. Apple, big thumbs up. I love that. We will not be using it today though. So let's connect to our Wi-Fi. Mm, I love that magic keyboard. I the, the MacBook Pro 13 is my favorite typing ever. Cause it's like, can you see this? It perfectly fits my hands. Like if I starfish my palms out a little bit, you can see my palms perfectly fit on this keyboard. Um, and we're gonna be doing a typing test here in a second because I love, oh, no, I don't wanna do that right now. And we've gotta verify ourselves, which is why I have my iPhone, my handy dandy iPhone, which will let me verify myself and let us log in to this computer. I wonder if your Apple ID is ever like, man, why does this guy buy so many computers? We just had to verify this guy on a Mac mini. Then we verified him on a MacBook Air. Now we're verifying him on MacBook Pro. Stop buying MacBooks, guy. Am I arguing with myself right now? <laughs> man, but this is, this is what I'm comfortable with. I love these things. Thunderbolt 3 is great. I do wish it had an SD card reader. It's not, the SD card reader is not as big of a deal for the Mac mini because the Mac mini is designed to be in your house. It's got IO in the back of it. You can plug in an SD card dongle. It's not that big of a deal because it's never going anywhere. But the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air, I do wish they had SD card readers in them because there is a lot of times when I'm traveling, well, I used to, I guess I haven't traveled recently, but when I do travel, I really hate bringing along dongles with me. I'm exceedingly boring when it comes to my account. I always name it Ted. If you're new here, like we mentioned in the MacBook Air video, Ted is the everyday dad. So welcome. If you didn't know that, you learned something. We all learn something every day. I get it. That's not necessarily how it's spelled correctly. I totally get it. And now we're going to say how much we don't want to use some of these services. It's almost like I've done this a time or two or three or four or five. You saw how much the verification was yelling at me for how many computers I bought, I purchased. I clearly know how this is. Okay, we'll set all of this extemporaneous stuff up later. Don't wanna do the iCloud drive. Don't wanna turn on this encryption. Don't hack my machine, please. Yes, let's turn on, let's do Touch ID. Even though when I have this set up like in my house, I never use Touch ID because it's always plugged into like a monitor. We always set it up just in case. Just, you never know, maybe you're traveling in the time that you travel now. You never know that you might need it. Set it up later. Light mode, true tone. I, one of the things about the setup process that I do wish is you never get the option to not do true tone because if you're a, a video editor, you don't want the screen color changing on you. That's a bad thing. So I do wish we could just set it up to not have true tone in the beginning. And this is the MacBook Pro 13. About this Mac, we have the M1, 16 gigabytes of RAM, Storage, we've got our one terabyte-ish. Again, they have to put the operating system somewhere. They have to put it on your hard drive. Not as big of a deal when you have a one terabyte solid state drive as opposed to the 256 on the MacBook Air. We get the beautiful Mac OS background. So let's increase the brightness and see how bright this goes. This should be a little bit brighter, but to my eyes, it looks very similar to the MacBook Air. Maybe they both have 500 nits of brightness this time instead of 650 and 500, if I remember correctly, from last year's model. You may not know this, but I don't have all of these specs memorized at, at all times. I wanna type something here, so let's... Typing test. Typing on... Ooh. That just feels amazing. Like, this new Magic Keyboard is my favorite keyboard on any laptop. And it's just, this is perfectly sized. Like this is, yes, I like on the MacBook Air how it's angled a little bit. I like how this is uniform. It's very satisfying. Can you hear that? It's very satisfying to type on. The trackpad's gigantic. Okay. 
I think we've got enough of our initial impressions. Initial impressions are it's a MacBook Pro 13, which means it's really good. I'm a gigantic fan of MacBook Pro 13s and I don't hear the fan. Like the fan hasn't turned on at all. And I don't even hear it going on in there. And I don't feel any air coming out of it. So I assume this is gonna be as thermally managed as the Mac Mini. And so the M1 chip is just gonna be able to run rampant and do amazing things. So I cannot wait to put this to the test. So let me know in the comments below, what would you like to see out of the MacBook Pro 13? We're gonna do the video editing video on the MacBook Air because it is more underpowered than say the MacBook Pro 13 or the Mac Mini, which we already did the video on. So if you really wanna see the video editing video about the MacBook Pro 13, leave me a comment below. Otherwise, let me know what other kind of content you'd like to see because I will be making, I've got over a month of content planned out, but if there's something you all specifically wanna see, I do like cutting for user requests all of the time. And if you like this video and you wanna see how powerful this M1 chip can be without any hindrance because it's plugged into that Mac Mini, you can see my video editing video that we did with the Mac Mini, which I assume would be very similar to the MacBook Pro 13. You can find that by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.